Did you get it? Is it on? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Taking Over the World with Ed and Eric. What's up, buddy? Just living the dream, buddy. How are you? Fantastic. Good weekend? Yeah, my Dolphins lost. Great weekend. Of course not. It's not a good weekend. Listen, just become a Cardinals fan. You get used to li- losing and no, ASU no. loss, a- Arizona loss. Like You just get used to it. You just get numb to the feeling. No. I feel like this is how Detroit Lion fans must have felt for like all those years. But now they're not like that. You hey, just I'll to... tell you who else is coming on board. The Patriot fans. They got a, oh. they got a rough walk coming. <laughs> a do. rough walk coming. They do. They okay. benched their quarterback. I'm going to blow your mind for something. You're going to What's blow up? my mind. We're talk- are you into F1 at all? Have you started paying attention to it with the race coming or no. anything? No. Okay. So I started watching it a while ago. Did addicted. You? Full-blown addicted to it, right? I love right. it. Right. That's right. I saw, I saw big, it. Big F1 guy. And this stuff has been coming out for a while, but my brother was in town. We had some family in town from the weekend. We were talking about this. Okay? All right. The packages. And I feel like this is like, and I'm sure we're just probably naive to it because you get over in like Dubai and all these European, Saudi like, and like yeah. Monaco, like all these places probably like this kind of stuff is like no big deal. But for probably the casual race fan in like vegans, vegans, are we vegans? We're not vegans. I don't, I don't know. Vegans, wait, less I vegans. Okay. Yeah. Like this, this is insane, right? Okay. The emperor package. Okay, this includes... Sounds like a package. Right, it. right, right. This sounds like that. We're going to call that Ed's package, right? <laughs> Which probably hinted the upcoming cost. Includes a Nobu Sky Villa with a terrace for up to 75 people. No booze? N- no, Nobu. The hotel. Oh, Nobu. No, oh, yeah, oh, Nobu. Oh, yeah, the Nobu yeah, Sky there, Villa, there right? You go. Right? There you go. For up to seven, you have the terrace suite villa with up to 75 people, 12 tickets to the F1 paddock race with the Rolls Royce driver for the weekend to take you wherever you want to go. VIP tickets to go anywhere you want for the race. It includes some stuff at the hotel and tickets to see Adele. Oh, God. Only, okay. in, only in Vegas can you package something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. Right up? What's the price tag? For 75 people? Well, 75 people are not going to the race. How many only people 12, go to the race? 12 tickets to the F1 paddock. With the, with the, with and the how many tickets race. to Adele? You know, it doesn't say that. It doesn't so let's so we're going to assume 12 tickets to Adele? Let's assume something like that. Assume 15, 20 tickets, something like okay. that. Okay. I'd have to say it's half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. 500000 at least. Would you pay $500,000 for that experience? If I had the money to blow, then yes. Okay. If I had like disposable income where 500000 wouldn't affect my life in the least bit, then I would probably do that. Well, let me tell you this. If you could have, if you, the statement you're saying is true with your disposable <laughs> income at 500000 you're still not even close to being able to buy this Emperor's package. Five, wow. Five million dollars. Woo! For the Emperor's okay. package for you. There this. you go. So you can take your 500000 <laughs> <laughs> and if that that puts you on the balance, <laughs> you could just count on. I'd be one, I'd be one of the twelve yes. that they get invited to the race from that package. <laughs> I would be the guy sitting at home on the couch watching it, right? Like wow, five yeah. million dollars. But this is what's wild, and so the reason I bring this up is that so you're just talking like all this crazy stuff that's happening in Vegas, and and it goes right into the housing market and real estate. It's like. Waiting for the market to crash. What's coming? Low inventory. What's going to change? Like, it's just going to, Vegas is just going to keep getting bigger. Right. I mean, you've gotten the, we got NFL now. We've had WNBA. We got the Golden Knights. Right. Obviously, so there, there's some big sports here. We obviously got the A's coming to town. LeBron and his cronies are bringing an NBA team, they say, right? Correct. So it's like, and now you get F1. F1 only has three races in the United States. Miami, Miami, what, what? 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 Number 305. I was going to say something. I was going to I was going to throw out three <laughs> random numbers and see how close I could get. I, I knew I was going to be wrong. <laughs> then you go to Texas, and then you go to Vegas. So you almost got, so you got the East-West Coast covered. You got right in the heartland covered. Right. Right? So it's like. What's next? I mean, this place is going to continue to get bigger. So this race is estimated to bring in and kick the economy in by half a billion dollars. I mean, they're expecting 170,000 tourists. Half a billion dollars? That's what they're saying. That's what they're I would saying. think it would be more than that. 
and up to 400,000 nights of hotel rooms being booked with an estimated economic impact of half a billion dollars. So as you start to look at this, and people are looking at houses and they're asking us, well, well I'm going to wait for the crash. Like, there's no indication. <laughs> like, like, Vegas is booming. And I think that's what people don't realize. Like, like just because things go up, like we talked about last time, like, I'm, like I get gravity. Plane right. goes up, it's got to come down. Hopefully it's on all those wheels and everybody's safe. But gravity, gravity. <laughs> Especially for you. Right? Gravity is a bitch. It is real. But, you know, like, the housing market doesn't, isn't necessarily affected by gravity. Right? Like, it can go up and it can plateau up there and that can be the new norm. And all these people waiting for it to come down, it's like, well, give me a reason it's going to come down. And, and, and of course, somebody out there is going to give, you know, you're gonna, you can debate both sides all day long. But, you're like, you start looking at this thing like, okay, inventory is low. Okay, so that means there's going to be more demand, right? Simple supply and, supply and demand here issue. Supply is low, demand is high. Supply is high, demand is low. Right. right? That's basic economics, okay? So then we get into the fact that you're getting all these sports teams. And what's better than getting all these sports teams with all this money? Well, now they don't have to pay state tax, right? So it's like now you got people retiring here, coming here. There's, I mean, we're already, you know, the entertainment capital of the world, as you call it, right? Now you start adding, you know, all these other events. And, I mean, you're packaging F1 tickets with Adele. Like, what a combination. Like, where else is that going to happen? Oh, yeah. I, heard, I don't know. Was it last Sunday night that the Raiders played on Sunday Night Football? Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. I think they did. And then um, Carrie Underwood's the sings the intro for the game. Waited all day for Sunday night. There you go. Look at that. Listen, <laughs> Carrie Underwood fan. Listen, but she's doing a residency here. Of course she is. So everybody that was at that was here for the game, as far as the announcers and Chris Collinsworth and all, just everybody went to go see her show. And they talked about her show while they were here. Where else can you get that? This is more fuel for the fire. Of course. Right? This is big entertainment tying in with football to make this a marketing ploy, right? Power like partners. I told you last <laughs> week, I'm predicting Taylor Swift's doing the halftime Super Bowl in Kansas City. In 2024. 2024, 2024, 2025, whatever that season is, right? Yeah. Now you got Carrie Underwood time. To, I mean, they've, they've been singing these songs forever. Yeah. But it's like, how can we get even bigger? So then they tie it to football, right? And I, and the memes are just still continuously her, uh, outrageously hilarious. Like, oh, did you see that guy Travis Kelsey uh, showed up to Taylor Swift's football game again? That one <laughs> that one made me laugh. But like, I tell you, man, all these people, they're power partners. They're working together. Did you did you happen to see the Andy's Room football game? No. Oh, is that the Toy Story thing? No, Dude, I it heard was, about it, it was but I didn't. Good. I didn't watch it. It was actually weird. so. What happened with it? Like it was, they were following it and they were like animating live. Like, they were what? animating live. They had. I kind of thought the to- the Toy Story characters were going to be football players. Okay, that's what I was. Like, that would have kind of my thought, right? Right, but they didn't do that. Okay. So what they did is they had they animated both teams. They animated the goalpost to show it said gold. Uh, I think it said goalpost and blocks. And like, right. remember the old yeah, wooden yeah, blocks yeah, that people yeah, used yeah. to use with the alphabet on them? Um, and then they had the slinky dog. Yeah. Was the I actual mean. chains. Okay. So it was Slink pretty was cool. Chain. Okay. Yeah. Like so, like, if, like if, if, they, if they got, you know. Tell they, me Mr. Potato Head was the ref and like his eye bells <clears> No. So it was like they, a blind referee. The claw okay. was the one that placed a ball after every down. Okay. I like it. Um, the aliens were actually recording, doing video oh. from the claw with the cameras. They were doing like the overhead videos. And then uh, Booger McFarlane was one of the announcers. And I guess what they wanted to do was teach little kids about football, right? Yeah. Sure. So every once in a while they had him in a suit and he was talking the whole time. But then he'd, when he'd just start talking about football and p- plays and stuff like that, He'd stand up, and they'd turn him into a football player again. Okay. With okay. his old jersey number and whatever. Well, that, that's like the Nickelodeon thing they were doing, too. With again, the slime. Again, they're just trying to, like, I think these people and these companies have gotten so big. And, like, you know, NFL is still a business. You know, like, you, you look oh. at all these owners and stuff. I mean, you just, you know, Jerry Jones, obviously, I mean, 
you just don't have to say anything about him. You get the Falcons guy, that uh, Art, you know, I forget what his Arthur last Blank. Name. Arthur Blank, like Home Depot guy. You get like the Home Depot all owner. These, all these guys the come founder. from big businesses, and now it's like, okay, how do we bring in more money? Now we're going for the the T Swift era, you know, like <laughs> right bringing bringing those in. Now you got you know trying to tie the kids in, make it fun for them to watch it. And I'll tell you what, I mean. Nobody accused them of not being smart, not being businessmen. Like no, they're. I mean, it, but it was it was actually pretty up. cool. Like my our our youngest son was twenty. When I told him about, it, he's like, "Oh, wake me up," because it was at six thirty in the morning on mm. at our on the Pacific Coast, nine thirty in in uh, on the East Coast. But it was pretty cool. Like it was, they had they had a lot of interaction. They had you know Bo Peep playing soccer. And explaining stuff during okay. the process. It was okay. it was a pretty cool game. It was a pretty cool thing. It didn't go off without a hitch. There was a couple of errors. Um, it froze every once in a while and stuff. Okay. But what do you want? It's live animation as the game's going on. Okay. So you bring up your son. So this was an interesting thing. I had this thought this weekend. I was watching my kids and do their thing and just around the house. And I started I started watching their mannerisms and stuff. Is there a trait that you feel that you've passed down to your kids, like good and bad? You're just like, oh, yeah, they get that from me all day. Or like, oh, they got that one from me. My bad. Well, I'd like to look at all the positive traits came from me. <laughs> <laughs> all the negative ones came from Mercy. Like, that's Ooh. just what we did. I, I just throw that out there. And on <laughs> next week's episode, Ed has been killed and murdered and is no longer here. So uh, we're going to have a guest for that one. Scratch out my name. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, no, but seriously, uh, yes. There, there, There's a lot of traits when I see them. And both good and bad, right? Sure, sure. So, so I'll look at, like, I'll look at my son, right, and his... His work ethic definitely came from from me. You know, he's he's a grinder. He wants to grind and do his stuff. Um, he likes getting up to go to work every day. Like that's so he definitely got that from me. Um, the argumentative got that from me too. Okay. So that's not good because then he argues with me all the time, and I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> Stop arguing with me. I'm yeah. right. Um, the always wanting to be right he got from his mom. That's Ooh. that's her trait for sure. Okay. Um, Amanda got the 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 dream big from me. Okay. Okay. She has that she has that trait of like we're talking about cars and stuff and the other day she's like I want a Porsche, you know. So she's got that wanting to dream big. Um you know, and then just other stuff like just social issues and stuff that we agree on cuz they've seen our takes and stuff on it. But yeah, a lot of stuff it's funny, yeah, because I was watching the kids over the weekend, and you know, no specific. You just start watching them, and you just, you know, like you ever get caught in that moment as a parent, and you're just like, oh, this is hilarious. Like, you know, oh. like you're just watching them in their element, and, and my daughter will go. I mean, she'll spend hours, and she can entertain herself, and I'll just be watching. I'll just be like, she's got some store set up, and she's got like things going on, and I'm just like. The boys are like playing Xbox and football and baseball, and <laughs> I'm just like, what? But it's funny just to watch them start to. So, which one has you think the which one is the closest to you? I think Brooklyn. I think my middle. I think my daughter. I think she's the closest to me. She's, but she's the killer. She's the one with the killer instinct. Yeah, is that, is that what... but she, but see, but she that comes out most when she's competing on the field. Okay. And so, like, I had that I when I competed that. I could see field. that with you. Like, like, I didn't like to lose. I didn't, I didn't like that. Because I could see that even when we're talking about, like, the baseball games that yeah. you have on the weekend. You're talking, like, you start talking off, like, oh, you know, we're going to have a good time. Then all of a sudden, it, it, it evolves into more competitive where you well, want to win. And that's, you know, and that's kind of where I think, you know, like, sometimes you'll see some ex-sports players that have good business careers and stuff. Or you, and, you know, and that's what we try to teach our kids and even, like, the kids I coach. It's like... Learning this stuff, being competitive, being part of a team translates so well, you know, because like you come into the office and like, you know, you want to be the best, you know, you have that competitive fire, you know what it's like to compete, you know what it's like to lose, you know what it's like to win. And, you know, I, I think that translates well. Like if you came into the office all day and you didn't keep score, like, well, what would be the purpose? You know, and people keep score differently. You know, like we keep, 
See, like, I, ultimately, I think, like, 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 we got yelled at this morning by Mercy, right? Where's my escrows? <laughs> right, right. right? I, I asked, and my prayers were answered. Mercy <laughs> checked in today and whooped us, right? But, like, that's the ultimate score, right? Escrows, right. not escrows, closed escrows. And, you know, along the way, you know, like, our, you know, we'll just stick with football. Our first downs, our plays, you know, our calls, our contacts, you know, that's our, that's moving down the field, scoring touchdowns right. is that appointment. But, you know, you got to score enough of those to win the ball game, and, you know, it's people that come in without a plan or, you know, you talk to them and, and they don't have a goal or they're, they're not competing for anything. And I think that's why you get a lot of people, especially in this industry, they get lost because you don't have a boss, really. You know, you, you don't have a time to check in. You can come in at nine, you can come in at 10, you can come in at one. But if you don't know what your game is or what you're competing for or have a plan, it's just like. Well, that's the thing. It's it's. Like, like you gotta have to have some type of an idea where your goal is gonna be. Just in life in general, I think you need to have a goal. Like, what do you want to accomplish in life? You know, do you want to just finagle through life, or do you want to actually have a, a an outcome where you're like, okay, this is what I want to do. Right. Right. So that's why you know taking over the world is perfect because that's what, that's what I want to do. <laughs> I want to take over the world. You know, and it's funny because I was actually watching Pinky in the Brain. You were watching Pinky in the Brain. I is that not. is that where you get your ideas from? <laughs> Is that like it? Like people go to YouTube or read books. Do you just watch like old Pinky and the Brains, just like take notes? No, no, actually, I it's don't. So full of shit. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but I can tell you that I honestly believe you manifest all these crazy things. Oh, for sure. Right? For sure. So I'm, I'm looking through TikTok the other day, right? And I'm, I'm on social media and I'm looking at it. And all of a sudden, there's uh, a guy that sells private jets. Okay. And you know, that's what I, I'm always talking about. I right, want a right, private right. jet. Well, he he literally he has he built a showroom. I think it's in London. Okay, I want to say it's in London, where he took the 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 body of an of a I think it's a G five fifty, and put it in. That's his waiting room when you come in. So when you come in, you're actually sitting in mm-hmm. side of an airplane. That's his lobby. Okay. So he's just all up in your head right away. He's just subconsciously Dude. getting you into buying oh, this airplane. Mode. He's all he got me deep. He's a, so he walks in, he has this it's probably the size of a thirty foot wall, thirty by thirty wall, where you come in, you sit down, you you get to like scope out the the, sure. the, the fuselage, I guess is what they call it. And you come into this other area where this big wall is, right? And he's like, All right, what's your budget? And you give him your, your budget. And then he says, okay, how far do you want to fly? Like, where do you want to be able to fly from and to sure. on, one sh- on, one, on one fueling? Then he gives you that. And he goes, how many people are you going to take with you? Let's assume each of them have three bags. And he starts coming up with this. And then the same thing that we do in our business. Like on a search? On a search. So, so yeah. you and I talk about this all the time, That's right? We're searching. Just, I'm thinking of that as you're saying this. I'm like, okay, okay, so, okay. So, well, when we do it, we're looking to try to see, okay, what's the, how many houses or how many houses do we have that meet your criteria? Right. He's doing the same thing with the plane. You know, what's your budget? How many people do you want? You know, like one guy walks in and he's like, I have a $50 million budget. And the guy's same, like, okay, same, for, yeah, same, yeah, same. that's my budget too. Same. But. <laughs> He's like fifty million dollars. The guy gives him the the the, the fifty million dollar budget. Then he's like, okay, so how many friends do you have? You know, how many people do you think would travel with you? He's like, no, 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 I wouldn't travel with anybody. He goes, he's the guy's like, I have no friends. He's like, you will once you have your plane. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's like put ten in there. You had no friends until you <laughs> until you move to Vegas, like you know, right? Everybody's your friend. And then he's like, um, then you calculate. So you calculate whether it's. A good investment to buy a plane because he goes over the same thing we do with houses, right? We go through, okay, what are you looking to do? What do you what? What's the reason of the purchase? You know, so he goes through everything, and then he's telling you. Um, some people rent their planes out when they're not using them to help offset some. So he's Airbnb in his house when he's not there, right? Okay, he's, yeah, Airbnb okay. in his house, like he's Airbnb in his uh, jet, his jet. But they go through the whole thing, and then all of a sudden he's like, okay, these are your these are your options. And this is the one I think you should get because this, but, but he calculates like going from West to East, there's less headwind. Okay. So you don't need as much fuel, but Mm. East to West, you need more fuel. So he calculates everything. And then he also calculates your expense on maintaining the planes and all that. And I'm like, dude, like, 
I gotta go. I gotta fly to London just to sit down with this guy. Even if I'm not buying a plane, just to, just to start budgeting it. <laughs> you, you. <laughs> just to sit down, just to sit down and tell this guy, yes, this is my budget. This is what I want to do. This is how many people. And this, this is guy's what I not travel. letting you inside of his lobby. What are you talking what, about? Maybe this is like to see a house. You got to have proof of funds. You think this guy's <laughs> like just gonna let every Tom, Dick, and Harry show up? And Look, be like, if I show up in one of my suits, he'd let me in. Really? I I think I can get in. Don't <laughs> challenge me because you know I'd do that. <laughs> so. I challenge you. <laughs> I will fly to England and I will show up in this. So thing. okay. So fifty million dollars. Well, that's the guy's budget. I was looking right. at. Right. So God knows what that buys, right? Oh, that buys. That has a plunge. You have a bunch of options at that price. So now we've got a fifty million dollar jet plane. Probably I don't even know what size plane, right? I, I'm. I think you could even buy like a seven thirty seven fully customized I'm at playing, fifty million. I'm playing freeze tag in that son of a gun at oh, yeah. thousand feet. Yeah, but like when he says like somebody was saying about buying a seven thirty seven, he's like. You need a whole staff in here. If not, you get lost in that plane. Like, you won't know what to do with it. It's way too much So we've got a $5 million Emperor Suite for the weekend, a $50 million plane. If you had, if you woke up tomorrow and had $2 million, $3 million in your bank account. I still have to keep working. Disposable. (laughs) It's not enough to buy my plane, dude. I got to keep working. (laughs) What do you want me to tell you? Hilarious. (laughs) What, What do you think you would go buy? What would you do with it? Let's say you had to go buy something. If I had to yeah, go you had buy, to buy something. something. I would probably real, realistically go out and buy a building. That's, that's dumb. Why? Because it makes too much sense. Like, that's this, what this I would is, do. We don't, we're not into this to make sense. Like, Oh, like, just a crazy purchase? I want something, yeah, I want something, I want something like... I'd buy a helicopter. You buy it. <laughs> See, that's better. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I figured I could see you showing up in like a full blown like Iron Man like <laughs> custom Iron Man suit. They like, don't sell them if not. I if you've would. got like three million, I'm sure somebody gives them to make you one. No, I'd, I'd, I'd buy I'd buy the helicopter and, and park it like Wolf of Wall Street did in his backyard. Oh my gosh! <laughs> start dropping in from the top of the building. Start coming in. I was thinking about that. I don't. I just. Have you seen that movie, by the way? Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah. Oh, pff, how can you not watch it? That, uh, I saw I've this seen it multiple times. I saw it this so weekend good. again. It was awesome. It's, it's a roller coaster of a movie. Like, oh. your ups and downs, but it's it plays. Oh. It's not for the faint of heart, though. Like, I couldn't see my Wait, wife watching it. Really? No. I saw it with the whole fam. I don't think Andy would like it. Yeah. So, Sell me a pen. It. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. <laughs> Sell me a pen. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, that's how it all starts. Like, I could, I could literally, I saw the movie and I was looking, watching it this weekend. And I'm like, you know, I could totally relate to this guy. Not the, not the craziness that he does, like not all the, all the crazy stuff he did, but the sales part of it and the, the mindset of I've been rich and I've been, I've been poor and I've, and I've been wealthy and I prefer being wealthy. Like, I, I, I see his like mentality of all that. Yeah, and, and you know, like part of it too comes into like, like when he asks the guy, well, when he tells like, I don't know if they do it in the movie, but like in the book, he talks about how he's interviewing the one guy. He's like, hey, sell me this pen. Right. And the guy's like, oh, well, you know what? This is, let me tell you why you need this pen, sir. It's the greatest craft. I mean, it's, it's imported from Italy. The ink is the finest. The grip is the greatest. You know, like all this crap, right? right? And he's like trying to sell it up and he goes... He goes, he goes, no, he goes, I, I still don't want your pen. I don't care about all that stuff. And then, like, his buddy walks in. And I think it was in the book. Again, I don't remember the scene, but he's it, like, was, it was in the movie. It was in the so movie, it too. Was, yeah, then he goes to his buddy who walked He's like, perfect timing. He's like, hey, Frankie, sell me this pen. And, and his first question is, how long have you been in the market for a pen, sir? And he goes, I'm not in the market for a pen. He goes, all right, well, then take your fucking pen back. I'm out of here. And he goes, well, and the guy's <laughs> like, what that was like? He's like, well, if you're not in the market for a pen, why am I going to waste my time trying to sell you a pen? Well, well, right. Well, in the movie, what what happened in the movie was he was he was at at dinner, and his buddy Donnie was there, and a couple other guys, and they were talking, and they gave it to one guy at the end. And he goes, "Hey, sell me." He gave it to a couple guys, and they were like, "Oh yeah, this is the greatest pen." Oh, whatever. He took the pen back, and he gave it to the guy at the end. He goes, "Sell me this pen." The guy's like, "Hey, do me a favor, write your name down and your phone number, oh, so yeah, I can call yeah, you." Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the guy's like, 
I don't have a pen. Here, buy this one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a classic move. I'm like, that that's is. that's a salesman right that there. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. You, I mean, there's some people that either they have it or they don't, you right. know, and and it is. It's something hard to teach, you know, that sales mindset because you got to think a little differently. You got to think outside the box. You got to be able to think on your feet. And I think that, especially in our industry, is one of the hardest things is people being able to think on their feet and be, you know, witty or smart, you know, like come up with something because somebody will tell you, right, I can't, I don't want to buy this pen or like you said, like you got to be able to come up with that on the spot. You can't just hold on one second. You said what again? Okay, let me scroll through my phone. Okay. If he says this, okay. Okay, what I'd like to say to you now, sir, like, it doesn't work that way, right? Like, Hold like, on, you said, you said you, yes. Hold on, let me go. Yeah, yeah, like, if he said I yes. Know, I got to look at my chart here, my objection chart. Like, And, like, I know you got to understand all that stuff. It's, it's like scripts, right? We talk about them as, like, you got to know your scripts so well that you don't have a script. You know, like, you need to know the process of the questions that need to be asked in the kind of the order that they need to be asked. But the minute you start being... Uh, hello, Mister Seller. Uh, what would you What would you do if you could sell your house tomorrow? Like, like first of all, why is that any of the business? How does that have like? And like, I'd buy another one. I got to move. Like, like what? Like, it's these. You know, like so you got to know that stuff and get through. And it's just like these stuff. Like you got to be able to think witty like that, or else. So hold on. What would you do if you woke up and had two million dollars? What would you buy? That's a good question, man. It wouldn't be a helicopter. It wouldn't be a plane. See, none, none of that interests me at all. You know, I think, I think I'd probably, dude, I could go get like a houseboat, go down to like Lake, Lake, Lake Powell, like, you know, get a, like a sick houseboat, put it out there. That way you could go out, get out of the state a little bit. Lake Powell's, have you been to Lake Powell? No. There, Lake Powell's. In Arizona? No, Utah. Where is it? Oh, Utah. Duh. Okay. So Lake Powell's the jam, huge lake, right? Just go put like a houseboat and a boat out there. I could see that. You know, like you could put probably, you could probably take two or three families out there enough to where it's like a getaway. It's like a staycation, not a staycation. All right. You got a boat. You take the kids tubing, water skiing, get out on the water a little bit. So in the next episode, you're going to have your houseboat. I mean, mean, that would be pretty sick. That would be, that would be an escalated timeline that I would be okay with, sir. Oh God! Ooh, I would take it. I think that's where I'm going though. You got anything exciting? Lake. You got anything exciting going on this week? Sports, man. Sports, sports, some more sports. Family's all kind of headed out of town. When are they head, heading out of town? The weekend. My mom's out of here tomorrow. But then it's time to. Uh, the boys are back in baseball. My daughter's softball, soccer. Boys got soccer. My son's got his first kid pitch game tonight. Oh. You know he was sick last game, or he busted his neck a little bit, so. The White Sox were one and zero, baby, but it's it's intriguing to watch. Like going from like my twelve U baseball team back down to eight year olds, like learning how to pitch for the first time. But is your son going to pitch or he's, no? He's going he's to pitch tonight. We're gonna put him on the bump. See what he's got. See if we can keep the over under on hit batters under well, three. <laughs> make sure he doesn't throw like uh, Stephen A did. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna fire the zone. We'll there see, you go. We're gonna see what happens. White Sox are one and zero. That's it. That's all you got to really know. All right, all right, buddy. We'll catch you next week. Yes, sir. All we'll right. be here.